Thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you for the rain. We do need it. Pray that you just watch over the ones that might be having flooding problems wherever they might be. It's a little early for that wrestling match to start. Pray that you be with the ones that aren't here today because they're traveling, Lord. Just watch over them. Protect them with your angels. Bring them back to us safely. And for the ones visiting today, Lord, we thank you for them stopping by, taking time out of a busy schedule just to be here. Pray that you just watch over us as we study your word. Allow the Holy Spirit to have a freedom that is usable for us as we leave this room so that we function in the world in such a fashion that it brings honor and glory to you. And also remember all the ones that have given their lives so that we can stand here or sit here and do what we're doing, studying your word unencumbered. And for all the families that have lost people, that you just allow us to continue to remember that over the weekend. Above all, just protect this country and protect its leadership right now. And just watch over what's going on and put your hand on it. In Christ's name, amen. amen. <coughs> all right. Now, where we be? Got paper. Oh, you need paperwork, Valerie. Hang on. I got a book bag somewhere. I can share. I heard you say. You sure? Okay. I'm I sorry. What? You say you didn't have any to paper today. So oh, no. No, that. Oh, you figured. Oh, no problem. We can go to Denny's. Yeah, I know. No, that's not happening. All right. <laughs> No, the paper we were talking about is the one that we're wrestling with for transgression and trespass. Lois doesn't realize what a hornet's nest she smited when she, when she did that. That's really but weird. some of the stuff that we came by <laughs> yeah, she even was, oh, you're here today? How are you doing? <laughs> anyway, we've got the, the, the two T's, okay? Problem is, there's a whole bunch of other words that go along with that. Uh, lawlessness, iniquity, unrighteousness, uh, uh, parabono. All, there's all kinds of there's, there's all kinds of words all over the page. But but sin is in all of when you get the old books, the new books, any books. Sin is always stuck in there with a definition of all the other words. So we're trying to wrestle with that, trying to figure out how to present it to you that we don't make you leave here like a, a, you know, your brain's just filled up with mashed potatoes because it has to be functional to work. <coughs> One thing I have noticed is it appears as to us, Allie and I and Scott to some extent, and Laura, if we can suck her into the vortex too if we need to, <laughs> all right, that all of the different words all appear to be out here in some frame, all directly traceable to sin, if that makes sense. Adam sinned. There was no law, so he could not be anti-law or going against the law. But he still, in God's eyes, sinned. So he had a problem. Same thing with his wife. Only he didn't call it that. He call, he didn't call it. He called it a what? Well, yes. you go back to. Go ahead. Adam. Yes, sir. There wasn't there a law. I mean, God said, "Don't eat of the." Tree. Well, yeah, and that's exactly. And that, that wasn't written, written down. down. <laughs> exactly. See, that's what we're wrestling with. Yes. So, what it amounts to is when God does actually make a statement. I think it carries the same weight as that rock that he put together on the hill and brought down in in, in the hands. Okay. So you have to delineate between those two. And that's why when we say, here seems to be a central piece, now how do you trespass? How do you transgress? How do you have an iniquity? All of these things have definitions, and we've got definitions for them all. We're going to give it to you, but I don't want you to leave here totally confused. So until we iron out some of the, the rankles, we have to... We're going to continue working on it. Go ahead. Like, like for example, the, the Adam sinning, or Adam eating of the fruit and doing his thing. Correct. In, in Romans 5, it's, it's a transgression, it's a disobedience, it's an offense, and it's sin. <laughs> the same act is all four. So he hit the, he hit the, he hit the big one. You know, he, hit, he got as many as he could in one swoop. All right? So what we're saying is, we're trying to put stuff together. We've already probably put 8, 10 hours, 12 hours into it just between Allie and I, her at home, and at our house, and then me doing stuff, and deaf and, you know, getting deaf. So all I'm saying is it's there. Doesn't mean we're going to come to some earth-shattering decision, but I do want you to understand it, if, if we can possibly present it that way. Okay? 
So there are differences to all the words. Most of them are nuanced differences, all leading to a particular frame, okay? All of them, and appears from in our studies that it can take place here. A lot of it takes place here, all right? And there's a lot of people who don't believe that. I'm sorry. Everything you do, do me a favor. I want you to go ahead and write a paper about little people. Okay? I can do that. All right. But where's it going to start? It's going to start in your head. Hashtag life in kindergarten. There you go. Right. Get your pencil out and put your paper on the desk. That's right. It has to start here. So we're finding that seems to be the common thread, whether they want to believe it or not. It's entirely up to them. The big wigs, you know, all the, all the wizards are smart. A poor dumb carpenter doesn't have all that shooting mask. And when it looks like what it looks like, it's probably a duck. Okay? So, all right, now, now that we tangled that all up, where are we at, boss? Page 271. So 12 hours rolled down to that. Yep, exactly. And, and the thing of it is, it's even worse than that. She sat there, and I sat there, and we've been pecking away at this for six or seven hours, and said, I haven't gotten anywhere. I didn't know where we were, but it was like a certain night. conversation. Everything you did was. came back to another place that you'd already been, and you went by it two or three more times. And the, the other thing is, we came up with that circle thing like an hour or two into it, and then we're like, no, 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 no. And then, like, a couple of days later, we're like, we should probably go back to that circle thing. Like, it's just. So, anyway, yeah. anybody had got anything to do for a few hours? <laughs> I'll buy the house. I got lots of books spread out all over Hack and Back. So, at any rate, all right, now, 271 more on. Yeah, right in there. Oh, 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 okay. All right, that'll work. And I put this up here for Memorial Day, okay? Imagine Mr. Lincoln had a pretty good handle on war. And that was the stage and that was the phrase that he used to hopefully let it sink into people's minds. And this we can do. This is definitely for sure. This is in Christ. So we know that it's not going to go away. Why? Because the Bible tells us it's not going to go away. It says there will be wars and rumors of wars till when? Till I come. So. And if you read the Revelation, the best thing you can do is understand if some warmonger is up there saying, peace, peace, get ready, you're going to lose your shoes because you're going to be out of here before the show's over. All right? Just so you know. All right. Now. Oh. What's ho, Scott? Ho? Ho or ha, depending upon how you work. Ho or ha. Yeah. Ho ha. Okay. Ho ha. Meaning what? Pay attention. The start things are about to be made. The blessedness. Remember we talked about the happinesses? Happinesses. All right? That's where you're at right here. Now, in Paul, Psalm 32, 1 and 2, equal to happiness, new concept, multiple blessings to Abraham, plus R, extract one blessing for summary. Understand what he just said? I didn't when I first read it. There are truckloads of things that come with salvation. Oodles. The list. 39 things. It comes. <coughs> you will find them as you mature in Christ. You will find which ones fit you at the particular time. Uh, whether it's uh, coming into a situation where you need to you use faith rest. Uh, faith rest. Faith rest. Anybody have... Here's an old book by theme, and, and I need you to realize something as we get into this. Abraham is your best, most brightest example of faith rest. The theme calls it that because it's your faith is resting in the integrity of God. All right? It appears to be the way that it comes together. And the faith rest technique from, from all the different things is a lot of it is in Romans 8. You can look it up if you have opportunity, 28 through 32, all right? And it's going to be the, the system. And Abraham was blessed. He would be the first one to tell you he was blessed. 
He never shied away from it, and he also never shied away from the fact that all of those blessings came from absolutely nothing he did. Nothing. He knew it was directly from the God that he had, he had taken and put his faith in, all right? Now, when it talks about the faith rest technique, or anybody having faith, end up claiming a promise. That's how you start the whole shooting match. What promise did he claim? Just think about it. He only had one biggie. He was going to be the father of what? All nations. Of all nations. Okay? That's a pretty big honking. And when we get into chapter 4, you're going to see how big it is. All right? Because the guy um, could not do that on his own. Let's put it that way. We'll get even more specific when we get into chapter 4. But the deal is, if you, if you claim a promise that stabilizes your mind, why does it stabilize your mind? Because you're anchored on a promise that was given to you by somebody that has integrity. How many of you know how to promise something? How do you do it? Anybody here know how to do that? How do you do it? Do you? What did you promise the land last time? What was the last promise you made to him? I can tell you the first one. Okay. I do. Okay, all right, all right, that's a good promise, and she's held it up pretty for the most part, right? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> I want to go home my life. I understand that. That was a perfect answer for me. So, that'll work for Mother's Day, Father's Day, all the other days. Of your that'll be fine. So, the thing it is, is you can promise, but it takes your integrity to back that promise up, all right? Anybody can run their mouth. Backing it up is where you start to have a wrestling match. All right, so he's depending on God to back up that promise, not anything he's going to do, because he can't. The old boy is older than, than the earth, and he can't, and those parts ain't working no more. All right? So that's where he's at. Now, second thing, you use a reverse concentration is what they call it. So here's what it is, just so you have it in your head. I know God knows everything. He's got foreknowledge of everything. He's got, he knows that everything has been predestined. In other words, he's got a plan for everybody in this room that's in Christ from the beginning of time and before. All right? So that's not going to be a problem at all. The call. God provides common and efficacious grace as a means to bring my future potential to fruition. What are we talking about? <clears throat> Holy Spirit's indwelling you now. Common grace got you where you are because it made you step into Christ and when you stepped into Christ, it went to efficacious grace. Efficacious grace is a functioning grace that allows the Holy Spirit to do in you what Christ has already put on the board. And you're sometimes helping, sometimes you're just along for the ride, and other times you actually have to do something. Okay? You pick your Bible up to study it. Why? Scott does it to be aggravated. Okay? <laughs> All right? Some people pick it up because they just love to read the Psalms. Am I right? Well, the thing of it is, is picking it up is your function. Once you pick it up, the Holy Spirit takes over and allows you to read it with a discernment and an understanding that you would never have if you were not indwelled by Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Okay? That is a program that has nothing to do with you, you are totally the recipient of it. All right? The curiosity of trying to figure out what the heck the difference is well, between <laughs> transgression and trespass. Yes, that's and, where we are right now. That's part of it. Exactly. Yeah. And you know what the Holy Spirit's doing the whole time you're doing that? Laughing. Well, I hope he's not laughing. I hope he's going, no, 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 go over here, go over there. Check it over here. Check it over here. Don't stop. You don't realize what you're doing to yourself as you do this. What you're doing is you're taking in more doctrine. You're taking in more stuff that's going to benefit you down the road. I'll guarantee you we've studied stuff now that's going to benefit us somewhere down along the road as we present something else. Because as you study that one little piece, he brings in other pieces that yeah. have nothing to do with that, but you learn anyway, and then you're just right. stacking Well, that's where I was going to go is this Holy Spirit started it in the first place. He's the one that planted it and made us all chase it. Mm -hmm. Not made us, but, you know, that's, he I mean, wanted yeah. us to go there. So mm -hmm. there's something in there. Apparently we need stirred up our curiosity. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you have outdone yourself. 
Here's the deal. Just through studying, I heard different things going on. Um, here we go. We'll go. Bobby takes in doctrine, and he takes in more doctrine, 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 takes in more, doctrine more, 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 all tied together for an uh, outcome. Okay? That's called consistency. That's called running the race. This is what Paul told you to do. He didn't say stop at Starbucks along the way in your race and pick up a coffee. I did. All right? No regrets. Oh, sorry about that. I, did. I forgot that. Okay. But here's the deal. He gave you the opportunity for all of these. Grace gave you the opportunity to learn these things, okay? Whatever it might be. Uh, say with me, it's controlling my driving habits. Lesson, 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 lesson. Oh, I even got stopped this week. By the police? By the police. You know why? No, you didn't tell me. Let's hear it. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was even more better than that. Congratulate you for being such a wonderful driver. That was it. I tell you, it was, it was, it was euphoric. Okay. He stopped me over in Rockledge as I was leaving the job. And he, and he pulled me over, and I pulled over, and, I, and as he got out of his car, he starts walking to me, and I could see his countenance like this, and all of a sudden I went, my tag is on my fender, not hanging from the rump of my trailer. And then he saw the tag, and he knew that he didn't need to stop me. He was being professional. So he came up, and honest to goodness, he said, you know, I see you have a tag. I said, yes, sir, I always have. And he said, but your, one of your taillights is out. I said, thank God for you. And, he, and I said, because I can never see it. So he said, don't worry about it. He said, I said, I'll get you it. Did you tell him how you're blind in one eye? I didn't. I didn't want to give him all the details. But the thing of it is, is, we had a conversation, and then it was even more better than that. Is he, said, he said, as he left, I really like that sticker on your, on your toolbox. That's the one where guns kill people like spoons made Rose Young doll all fat. Yeah. <laughs> and then when I was in Titusville the other day picking up some stuff, a policeman was on a motorcycle back here, and he went, bzz, bzz. and I thought, oh, God, not again. And he said, I really like that on his microphone for everybody to back here. I really like that bumper sticker on your toolbox. <laughs> so we all, everybody's happy. But the thing about it is, is I'm asking for the Lord to do Take my doctrine and make me calm in all situations. Because that's what his word said. And as I do that, I get better and better at it. Why? Because Bobby's being eliminated and doctrine is being accentuated. But if you go along and you decide that you're not going to take it in here, and you're not going to take it in here, and you might half listen over here, you've got a problem going on here. All of these things are a chain to him, okay? When he gets to the part where you're supposed to put all this together and you've missed several parts, you've impeded your maturity. Is he expecting that? Yeah. <laughs> Does that make sense? Understand what I'm trying to tell you? Consistently do whatever you're going to do is what, what he's telling these folks, and that's what he's telling. And Abraham did it. How do we know? Do you know what people probably did when Abraham said, oh, by the way, I'm going to be the father of the nations? Laugh. They probably laughed like a, I mean, talk behind the wall and all that kind of stuff. And that all took place, why? Because he was anchored on a promise <coughs> that had the integrity of God behind it. And he never, ever flinched from it. Even his wife was a little bit iffy at times, all right? So that's basically what they're trying to tell you. And, and in doing all that, that's why all this stuff comes together like this. The, and the foreknowledge works to my benefit. The predestination works to my benefit. All of these things work to my benefit. Is I claim these promises. So what happens after that is I put it together in one package. And like Abraham, I'm comfortable with the outcome. And I can go about doing what I need to do. And as I'm blessed, everybody in my sphere is blessed also. Okay? That's an outcome of his obedience. So that's where that's at as far as all that stuff going on. Now, when it talks about the rest of this, and it says, 
the blessedness, then this, the blessing of sexual prosperity is circumcision. You understand what, when, when the circumcision took place up here, all right, there was something that had to happen. This is all from God, okay, and this is a promise, okay, and it is obedience, okay, and at the same, when that all took place, cascade effect from that point on for Abraham. Everything he did, um, the guy had truck, he had farmer qualities, governing qualities, <coughs> military qualities, all of these things were accentuated because him being tied into the promise that God made him. All right? And all you have to do is figure out, <coughs> go to the verses in the Old Testament where Abraham figured out that a king had swept in and taken Lot as captive. And when he took Lot as captive, he grabbed his guys up and took off after them and came back with them. All right? That's not, that's not farmer qualities. Okay? That's military qualities put in somebody's head because God's blessing everything about them. Understand that. All right? And it says, for the circumcision, the Jews. Um... His circumcision was for, was for a nation, but it was an individual circumcision. <clears throat> okay. He said, look, I've got this problem. I want a nation out there that people know belongs to me. I'm going to give you a marker. The marker that I give you is going to be known by everybody. And everybody that knows it is going to know where it came from, why it came from, and what's involved in it. But how come he hit it? How come he did it? How come he hid it? H I D. Oh, he did, well because where it's is half, it's half real and half no, a joke. No, no, no. <laughs> no, it is really legitimate. Where, where's the hope? Does anybody know you're indwelled by the Holy Spirit? No. No, by my outward. Bingo. Okay. These guys, it was even more. They had public urinals. Oh. Okay. And when you whip your dinger out to take a tinkle. Now, was this a co ed situation? Or? I mean, it's like advertising, you know, it's like a billboard, okay? So, you, you see what I'm saying? It was it was not something that you wanted. I'm sorry. Is that, did that mess up your neighbor? Well, I'm wondering where the circumcision is here. Okay. And the thing is, is the circumcision is on your heart. But the outward showing of that circumcision is saying, I made a promise to Yahweh. Yahweh is backing up everything I'm doing. Go ahead. Well, it's similar because when we go out in public, we act different. People can see us Correct. acting differently than every, everyone else. Exactly. Well, they have and, to and they, you're not <coughs> circumcised. Well, thank you. I hope you I'm must not. be a medical guy. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yes, exactly. So all it is is, understand, it's a symbolic program that's going to be translated on the other side of the cross. All right? And that's where the Jews had to hang up. They made the symbol their, their belief system, not what it was signifying. It was signifying a, a heart that had been cut like all of them knew how to do for their, for their offerings, a heart that had been cut, and there was a union put together between man and God. That's what, they, that's what, they, that's what the show was about. They missed it. They wrapped everything around the circumcision, and, and then they ran with it, and it's been downhill ever since. And that's the problem that they have. And that's why he is called the father of us all. Not because of the circumcision, but because of the heart. Okay? He had this going on when nobody else knew what was going on. He probably set out there, and I swear to goodness gracious, and Ever been in a duck boat at 3 in the morning? No. What do you guys do? <laughs> you could have stopped at ever been in a duck boat. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, uh, anybody laid on the hillside somewhere? Have you ever oh, seen yeah. a duck? <laughs> Basic now. Anybody laid on a hillside? Okay. And you look up at the sky at night, you lay at night? Out, out the, okay. And you look up at the star, when well, you're not around the city, when you look up at the stars, Oodles and oodles and oodles. You know the other thing he has rattling around up here? Your people are going to be like the stars, stars in the sky and the sand in the, the desert. Anybody counted the desert sand yet? Yeah, last week. 
<laughs> so you see what I'm saying? This is rattling around in his head. So he's got all this going on, and he's clinging to it. And as he clings to it, he gets more mature and more mature, more bold, more bold, and keeps on doing what he's supposed to do. And that's why it's set up this way. Just exactly that reason. And with all of this going on, the neat part that I found is when we're all in this, it's in Joshua and Isaiah. Abraham came from a devil-worshipping family. So it was even more of a miracle and a blessing that he bought into what this God spoke to him about and said, yes, I want, I want this. I'm getting no return out of what my folks and my ancestors are doing. This is a different one. Can you imagine that? All right. So there are, if, if you're a devil worshiper and now you're a God worshiper, there's going to be a bunch of people ticked off on this pile over here. They're not going to like it at all especially when you start coming out with the stuff you're coming out with. And that's, that's where he's at. So with the circumcision, it says also on the uncircumcision. So he's referring to, to Gentiles here, not yet cut. So what we've got going on is the circumcision is going to go over here, and it's going to have the word grace wrapped around it. And the fact that it has grace wrapped around it means there's going to be a bunch of Gentiles coming down the street someday that won't have to have the circumcision, but the grace is going to have the same effect on them, and it's going to do the same thing to their heart. And as it does that to their heart, they're going to change. And as they change, people are going to notice. And as they notice, people are going to go, well, what happened to that guy? And when they say that, you and I don't realize what a, a billboard we are. Ever. Nobody realizes how much of a billboard you are. There are people paying attention to you that you don't even know pay attention to you. All right? And when they do pay attention to you, it would behoove you, be in your best interest, to be putting out a good billboard because you, you love the one that you're talking about. Okay? So, at any rate, now, works for grace. Um, these are just questions that came into my head. Were only Jews saved? No. Pretty easy question. No. All right? So now we know there's a nation being saved that has absolutely nothing to do with the Gentile nation. Matter of fact, they think they're dogs. But they're all going to have the same benefits. And the Jew does not have a monopoly on Jesus Christ. That's simple. All right? Could, uncircumc could uncircumcised be saved? Yes. You're going to see that again and again and again and again. And a matter of fact, to the exclusion of the Jew who's going to be cut out of the program at the time of, the, of, of Paul walking around, and they didn't buy into it, and he said, I'm not going to them anymore. And dedicate myself to the Gentiles. Did you uh, did you mean Jesus Christ there with the Jews? You said that the Jews had exclusive to Jesus Christ, but they didn't believe in him. Uh, yeah, that's did a weird God? That's, that's a weird thing too. But they believe in God. Yeah, they do the Yahweh thing real heavy, but but the Jesus thing that well, let's put it this way: they might believe Jesus Christ would be the Son of God, but he didn't come the way that they expected him to. So he lost a lot of his luster, and when he lost his luster, he lost position, and when he lost position, he lost prominence. And then when you look at the bigger picture, uh, you know, God knows everything, everything's a plan. Um, why? <laughs> why did you throw the monkey wrench into it like that? Um, I mean, I know that's a rhetorical question. I mean, right, that, because you know. of the angelic conflict. That puppy right there is running the whole show. That, that's in between the lines we don't get. Satan. He's in his appeal process, and he's working every angle he can possibly work to get a different verdict that has been laid down by God. So that's why you and I are exhibit one. Or evidence. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then, in, you know, Jesus was a Jew. There, but at that time, that's all there was. There, there really wasn't anything other than being Jew or non-Jew. Is that right? Accurate. Right, but so, one thing you need to... One so they thing, carry no weight. No. It's not like he made a choice. Right. But here's the deal. One of the things you need to realize with all of this, and, and you don't, you know, it's not something you're going to put together unless you start walking through all of it is that when Christ was here, here's Jesus. You know the first ones that came to him were Jews. Because that's all there was. 
No. no there was Gentiles. There were others, but the Gentiles didn't realize it was open to them at first until you start seeing little snippets. Cornelius shows up. Okay? What did he say? He didn't say anything about Judaism. He said, I know all about authority. What did he say about authority? All you have to do is the same thing I do. I command my soldiers to do such and such, and they go do it. You are a man of authority. All you have to do is what? Say the word. Say the word. Now, when, when Cornelius did this, it was the beginning of people's eyes being open to the fact. I, you know, the sad thing is, I don't want to put this in. Jews from here, and it's going like this, okay? And Gentiles are here, and at the same time, they're starting to go like this, all right? What's happening? Jews are on an unbelieving trajectory. Gentiles are on a believing trajectory. And where do they meet right here? That's when Paul says, he's looking down and he says, I will not be going to the Jews any longer. All right? So when, he's, when Paul is talking right here, <clears throat> it's changing. Now... What he, and that's, you know, and what it is, where are we headed? We're headed to the church age. Okay? That's all there is to it. It's not, it's not giant big to do. And where are these folks headed? Well, they're just flatlining. Well, yeah, pretty, well, I mean, I, I, yeah, I would imagine so. You can probably flatline them. Where are they headed? They're headed for a world, world system. Okay? And that's all there is. World system or you have church age. And that's, you know, these are, these are simultaneously running now. One of them's going to come to an end with the rapture. The other one's going to come to an end with the coming of the Antichrist and all that seven years. So that's what these folks are doing with all of this. I know yeah. they're heading Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a distinct possibility, okay? Although I did see there's a guy coming out with a movie that's going to do the Roe v. Wade. That what really happened there, all the, all the back lies and... Fake stuff they put together for that little program. That ought to be a real Yahoo. Go ahead. Well, didn't the Jews believe they they, they didn't? How can I say this? That, uh, they didn't say that Christ didn't walk amongst them and wasn't good. They compared him to like Isaiah, a yes. prophet. Yes. Yes. But they just believed because of what you said, it wasn't the time for him to come. Yes. <coughs> Correct. Well. And they were still waiting for. Yeah. That not only not the time for him to come, but he didn't come the correct way. Right. Yeah, had he, was, he yeah. swept Rome out of the way, yeah, they would have bought into it, and we'd yep. have had a different program. Yes. Exactly. And and with their non-belief that it was it was a benign non-belief. It was not a it was not a major non-belief. Okay. And the fact that it was not a major non-belief meant it was cre creepy little steps away. It was not everybody pulling up stakes and, well, we're out of Dodge. Okay? It's not any of that. So that's the nice thing about it. And with all of that, I got a bag The nice thing about it is he always leaves the door open, always leaves the door open for him to come back at any time, any way, anyhow, any he knows or he wants. Okay. Maybe the Jews were so caught up with their enemy, the Romans, Correct. they were missing the true enemy. Correct. And didn't, and therefore did not see Christ as the answer Correct. to the exactly. true enemy. And they were looking for the answer to their. Still today, enemy. yes. Still today, it's the exact same way. That's, it's never. It won't change until until the show's you know scratched out and and everything goes on. Now, flip over to was it two seventy two? All right. And it says, we say, they're communicating again. What are they communicating? He said, Paul, communi communicate, contend, debater's term. Paul's going to put himself in this position again so others understand. Paul, as a sound doctrinal teacher plus other pastor teachers. Um, when I say something here, we say, all right, what am I backing it up with? Doctrine. Okay. Always doctrine. Always make it Bible-backed. I don't give, I told you a hundred times, I don't give a rip about your opinions. If your opinion doesn't tie to a doctrinal statement, it's useless. But when your opinion is, a, is an outcropping of doctrine, that's an entirely different situation. You're adding to the, to the information, not subtracting. 
Hence, when you're doing it this way, you don't have a bunch of arguments. Because if you know what the word says, you don't have to worry about what somebody thinks it says. Here's what it says. Alright? Um, with the word we say, Lego. Lego means Lego means Lego. It always means Lego. It always means say. Okay? It doesn't mean parse. It doesn't mean what is the term is is. Okay? It doesn't have any of that. Uh, spy or an informant. And it doesn't make any difference. The term means what it means. You bank on the meaning that God put with it, not what the world put with it. And that's where you, you keep yourself there, you don't have a problem. Now, and it says, we say for something happened and something was reckoned. All right, we already did the reckoning thing. All right. And when we do the reckoning thing, Counted. Okay? That's reckoned. I think it means counted. Okay? You just spell reckon whenever way you have to. All right? Now, credit to his account is to impute. This is impute. Okay? All right. So, we've got Abe over here. Um, Bobby. Kathy. Adam's family. Two D's. Okay? All right. Now, what do you got? Abe had it reckoned. Bobby had it reckoned. Kathy had it reckoned. The Adams family had it reckoned. The ones that have, all the ones that I know, I know, as far as I know, they're all in Christ. What is it talking about? All right, number one. First thing on the list. Plus R, plus R, plus R, plus R. Every one of them has got shoved, righteousness shoved right in them the minute they nod their head. And by the way, you do not invite Christ into your heart. Okay? That is a work. Holy Spirit sees you, you cut, and when he comes in, then your will takes over. You can say, no, I'm not interested. So it's safe to say he's already there. He's there. He's looking for interested people, if that makes sense. And you don't even know what you're interested in. That's this, I hope he's got a, I hope he has a lot of things like trespass and, and and transgression. I hope he's got a lot of papers on the table up there when I check into heaven so I can get some of these things cleared up. Okay. How, how does this so great a salvation? How does this so great a salvation work? How does common grace creep into my life and change me totally, even though I'm not I'm I'm, I'm just not I'm not going yes, no, up, I'm not a bobblehead, any of that. But it happens. Alright? And as it happens, what happens to you? You end up, go ahead. Yeah. You know why? Because there's this guy called Jesus, and he said something that if you wanted to tattoo something on the back of your hand, tattoo this. The good work that I have started, what's he going to do? I'm going to complete it. That's what it means to step into Christ. All it means is your four corners were mapped out, and the minute that Bobby stepped in here, this took place. He said, now I'm going to get him to the other side. Doesn't matter how much kicking and screaming he does, he's going to the other side. All right? What do they always tell you in all the, in all the spooky movies? Go to the light. <laughs> okay? Well, that's exactly what I'm doing. Jesus is over here. He's the light, and I'm headed for him. And understand something. Um... When you are in a lighted room and you close your eyes, can you still see light? I mean, unless you got really fat eyelids or something. Okay. All right. I'm sorry, you're not supposed to say that? No. Well, okay, so you close it. So do you still see the light? Yeah, you still see something. Have you ever been anywhere where it's totally dark? Okay. Can you see anything? Anything at all? All right. How do you fix that? Because please understand something. If you've been in one of those places, that's you pre-Jesus. All right? You say, I'm controlling my life. Even though I can't see squat, I'm still controlling my life. And all of a sudden, somebody comes over here and 
clicks their bank. What happens to you immediately? You go, ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you s automatically you see it and you focus on it and you do it. And that's what these guys are saying here. The moment this group was imputed, I saw a light. Instantaneously. Yes, ma'am. So why did you say before you don't ask Christ in here? Because it's not something you're doing. What it amounts to is you can't do it because if you're asking, it means you have a choice in the matter. If he steps in, then you have a choice. Once you're here, once you belong to him, you can say, no, I'm not going to follow you. How, what do we call them? Carl Christians. Go ahead. It ends up being a response to him. You believe in him. Correct. Instead of him saying, do you want to? Yes, I want you. You know, it's not. Correct. It's, you're not, hey, hey, do you want to come in? It's, it's like, I, it's like I, he I does this. You come in. Yeah. I'm here. Yeah. And Len leave. says, get your flipping hand off my yeah. shoulder. <laughs> okay. <laughs> keep, it, keep your hand right there. You see what I'm saying? It's that type of arrangement. And, and the more you study it, the more you realize that you're not, you, you're, you're there, but you're part of a program. Hey, Bobby, it, it, it's, you know, it's almost as if we have this feeling like Jesus is, 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 is walking by and you go, hey, Jesus, come into my heart. Yeah. And it's not that. He actually seeks you first. Correct. You know, and you Correct. He comes to you, and you know, because he's the one standing at your door to not, you know, he's there. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, I stand at the door and knock. Right. So yeah. He's already he's at already your door. There. You right. haven't done anything to get him there. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And can I and can I and can I give you even a better one? You know what that stand at the door and knock one is about? Christians that have stepped away and not come back, and, and yeah. he says, "I'm still at the door. I am not going anywhere. Just like the first time you ran into me, yeah. I have gone nowhere." And as a matter of fact, there is not even a doorknob on the outside. It's one of them goofy doors that you get where there's one knob on one side. That's it. That means he stepped outside the life of the believer. Uh, yeah, and, I, and I've got it even better. I think you went through the door, closed the door, and you left him on the other side. I don't think he stepped anywhere. I think you left. I think you backed away. Why would I back away? Anybody get mad at the Lord? Or is that just me? Okay? All right? I bought some staples from my gun the other day. I don't know, 17 bucks. And since I have a brain damaged brain, I left them sitting on the side of the truck. Oh. And I, I chewed him out all the way to the job. I said, did you get a kick out of that? Is there something you like about this? Is there something I did? You know, what do you want? Yeah. So by the time I got to the job, I had already pulled the other staple gun out. It was ready with staples. And I said, why do you do this? I was and, in and he says, and I got this box of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought it was a blessing from heaven. <laughs> so all I'm saying is, I, and, and, and I never ever, when I get these systems going in my head, I never think that he doesn't want to listen to me. Does that make sense? Well, what did you think? What did I think? I thought, you know, if I had you right here, I'd drag you through a knot hole sideways. Really over a box of staples? Yeah. Okay. Remember I mean, how at the time, drives, okay? at, the, <laughs> at the time, it was really important because I thought, I can't just wheel the trim to stand up. Okay? But when I got it all squared away, I said, yeah, the other gun's here. It's got plenty of staples in it. Why did I go off on that tangent? So you're not the guy with the... Every time we see that paint that's on the road, we're so... No, I'm not, that, not, not yet, anyway. Okay? Not yet. So... <laughs> the bomb making where they drop bombs. Yes. No, not yet. But the thing about it is, is he's imputed this to me, but there's still this guy hanging around called my sin nature that sneaks out of the cracks every now and again. And when it does, talk about feeling like an idiot. You really do. I mean, I get all tor torqued off and then he calms me down. He says, yeah, yeah. You remember when I told you you were going to be like that every now and again? I said, yeah, you have to remind me too, don't you? And he says, sure, I do. He part of my life, okay? A part, just like I can never get rid of Mrs. A. That's right. Okay. <laughs> All right? Because she's part of my life. All right? Is that the only reason? I'd like to hear you a lot. But the, the Lord is just, he's an integral part of my life. And when you have that system, you can't, it doesn't go away. The more you depend on them, the more you depend on them, the more you depend on them, next thing you know, you can't not depend on them. I got a different analogy. You're talking about. Is that because she's not here today to defend herself? <laughs> 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 no, this would be 
uh, uh, your walk with Jesus. You, you know, he's already in the room. Correct. Let's say the room. And uh, somebody alluded to the fact that he can step outside of the one-sided door. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking one is, once he's in the room, he stays in the room. Uh, you've got on the same plane as far as what a, a conversation is going to be like. You're both sitting on the couch, and occasionally you nod off. You take a nap. He's still there. He's still talking. You just don't quite hear it. Yeah. So you got to train yourself to stay awake and to listen. Yeah. What yeah. You say. can. Yeah. You can get good examples of that when when you see him go off to pray. And he said he left the disciples behind, and you just see John go. <laughs> you know, just really sucking in all the really heavy duty spiritual stuff. So that that fits too. I mean, it really does. And the thing of it is, is it doesn't offend him. But I don't think he leaves, is my point. I well, don't think he steps you know, out. I'm sure we, we just... Because he already knows he wouldn't even come in the room. It's no different. If you're not focused on him, you're not focused on him. Basically, whether it be hearing or sight or whatever. If I'm not focused on a doctor, I'm focused on something in my heart, go ahead. But it also says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. It's there not, you I draw near to you it's, and then yeah, you draw near to me. It's reciprocal. By all means, the more that scripture gets shoved into you, the more he wants to hang around. Why? Because you got really good stuff on the shelves. And he okay? has a plan for you. Yes, exactly. And, and that's we're, where it's we're at. We're forgetting about the slave thing too. Oh yeah, <clears throat> but, but 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 all of that's taken. He says, "Now it was reckoned to Abe." All right. So Abe gets some reckoning going on here, and the term that's here with Abe, and it has to do with the term alone. Okay. That term right there is. Uh, singularly the best arrangement anybody on planet earth can have all right here's how we how you put it we say lego contend abraham had credited to his account the belief in his object of faith his object of faith we call it god yahweh old testament terms all right new testament terms or terms that fit, it is also Christ. Why? Because everyone that comes to Christ is saved. The way to heaven is Christ. The way to salvation is Christ. God, Christ, Holy Spirit. Christ was the one that they pictured for that. God was the initiator. Christ was the instigator. Holy Spirit is the programmer. He gets, gets the show going. All right, That's what they're talking about. Resultant in imputed righteousness, plus R. Everybody in here is plus R. Always. Even when Christ is on the other side of the door, you are plus R. Henceforth, you have the ability in you to let him in. He wouldn't even be knocking if you didn't belong to him. How many sheep had to be lost for him to get on the war path and go find it? Sorry. It ain't no crowd program. Same as this right here. Alone. Abraham alone was imputed with righteousness. Eva alone. Valerie. Valerie was raptured. <laughs> so she's winning. We got, we got some serious praying to do this afternoon. So you understand what I'm saying? Everyone alone. It was, it was a one-on-one -on -one deal. That's what they're talking about. And, the re and resulted in justification. All right? Here's what we told you. Salvation is here. All right? And as a result of salvation, justification can step in because here you went minus because you were cleaned up. Here, you went positive because you were injected with righteousness, and now you're blessed. She's bad. <laughs> That's a lot of pressure off of us. So, all right? And it's a justification or blessing. Now, this is what, this part right here is what David was talking about when he said his cup runneth over. Okay? This is pre-indwelling Holy Spirit. How did this happen? We have it because we say, well, we're filled with the Spirit. What happened to them in the Old Testament? Thought about it? How did it happen? Faith. Faith. Exactly. Faith in what they saw. Faith in what they read. Faith in what they were spoken to by God or angels or whatever. Um, when was the last time a couple of angels stopped by your tent? 
when was the last time we were in a fight? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right? You see what I'm saying? So what do you do with a situation like that? Don't tell me that doesn't trigger something up here. Because not everybody has angels stopping by their tent. Or their duck boat. <laughs> or their duck boat. Yeah. Or a burning bush that talks. Or a burning you. bush. Or the donkey gives you a, a hey, a what's up about the guy with the sword in front of you. Okay, you see where that stuff kind of comes into play with your head? And now I realize with these things going on in this venue, in this dispensation, I've got a plus R. And the fact that I have a plus R, you know what happens to me? It's real easy to get puffed up. So what do you do? You remember why you're plus R. I'm plus R because God thought to come into my life. Jesus entered into me. Holy Spirit stopped by in common grace one day and pulled me aside and said, oh, you're one of the rotten apples we're taking out of the barrel. Okay? And everybody says, well, that's just mean to all the rest of the rotten apples. No, it's not. He didn't have to take any of them. He could have just kicked the barrel into the hot hole and made fried apples. It didn't have to happen, okay? So that's what, that's what all this stuff is, is leading to, and that's why they put it this way. Now, and it talks about <coughs> Abe's faith is a personal pronoun. Abe's faith. So now I have a Gentile as an example. All right? That's the part they leave out when they're Jewish, by the way. They all put a lot, and I mean, you've heard it before. What is it? Abraham, Isaac, Isaac and Jacob. Jacob. Have you heard that? Mm -hmm. So we're going Gentile, Jew, Jew. Oops. What's prideful about that? Gentile goes first. <laughs> well, you see what I'm saying? It's, it's kind of a nifty little program they got going on there. But there it is. And there's, it says, talks about an object of faith. Now, him alone is a plus R with an object of faith. All right? There is only one object. Okay? Did the Jehovah's people ever show back up? Uh, no. No, I think I pretty well wore their shoes out. There was a couple of them over there in Rockledge the other day, but they didn't come by my house. <laughs> Since Abraham was in the they beginning come by the Gentile. houses now on a park or what? What now? Since Abraham in the beginning was a Gentile, yeah. wasn't he really a Jew after his belief? Uh, he was a Jew after, yeah, really. I guess you can say 19 years later when they instituted the Jewish faith. Yeah. yeah. So he became. Yeah, he kind of morphed yeah. into that. So he's like a um, Jew. It didn't master. exist. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't exist. I mean, it, this is one of the situations where this was totally God. This Jew thing. Just God. Yeah. Red letter. He said. We got all these things where people running around the world, and there's this one and this one and this one. And I'm going to make a race unto itself that is only something that I could do. All right? And understand something. They actually went so far, and God went so far, to give them physical characteristics that were discernible. The nose. <laughs> I wasn't going to go there, but okay. All right. You see what I'm saying? So he made, they made changes to them as they became his that marked them out. Their clothing, um, if you go to the Hadassics, the ones with the hats and the little wiggly wagglies and the, and the beers, you know, the little corkscrews on the side of their head, you know, that kind of stuff. So it, they, they come, and the problem is, instead of them using that as something to point to God, they used it as something to point to them. Themselves, exactly. Yes, which is where the, where the, the faux pas kind of showed up. So. And then after the faith part, after his faith, that's there. Jesus, with his faith, um, always remember, it is non-meritorious faith. Okay? This word right here eliminates you calling, asking God to come into your heart. Sorry. All right? I might be stepping all over your theology, but it doesn't make a lick of difference to me. Okay? Non-meritorious is non-meritorious always. Uh, what is the verse? Uh, come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, yada, yada, yada. Not by works, but by faith. No works. 
but if I have to hit you a hundred times with that no works bat, I'll do it. it that's because it says, yet anyone shall boast. Exactly. And how I many who would boast? <laughs> anybody? Not anybody in here. Okay. But the thing of it is, it's, it's not hard. Um, remember when Paul had the vision and went to the third heaven? Or close to the third heaven? Remember that? What, did, what was the one thing that he said after that? Remember the thing that really struck me? He never told anybody about it. He never told the story. Henceforth, when these people tell me somebody died and went to heaven and came back, and they want to write a book, a uh, big flashing lights and bells and whistles and everything else go off, because if anybody would have been able to relay a story of sound entertainment with heaven, it would have been Paul. Okay? And that guy told him to shut thy eyeball. <laughs> okay? That's exactly how it was. It's probably a Greek word for that song. John told the story, though. Is that, well, yeah. He, he did. Every, and what did he tell her? He yeah. No, why did he let him tell it and not Paul? Why? John got there first. <laughs> that was it. It was his time. Communicated. Correct. They also had different personalities. Yeah, John, yes. John was... And why? No. Please understand something. Did. Paul didn't have a handle on God all the time. John From had. Young age. He, he was, was on a point. different plane, guys. Even though I don't think he was laying there with his head on Jesus' <laughs> breast and all that kind of nonsense. He had a handle on spiritual maturity and who Jesus was. Yeah. Above and beyond everybody else. Henceforth. He didn't even have a problem at the end. He got stuck on an island where he got all kinds of new information. Where everybody else was taking a whooping. All right? So, you see what we're saying? And who else was not allowed to say anything, by the way? Another guy that was right tight with, with Yahweh, Jesus. Daniel. Daniel. Yeah, yeah. Daniel was given all kinds of insights. And he said, do me a favor, close the book, and do not speak of what is in it. Right? So I'm sure there's everybody's looking for that book too. So, but at any rate, this is what they're talking about here now. The, and it says, the faith that he has is in Christ, and it, and it is told again and again by him that that's who it's in, God. And it says, with it talks about faith for righteousness. The plus R that we're speaking of is imputed to Abraham, and did not he did not invite Christ into his heart. You only believe God does not pour until he has a cup. You understand that? Uh, how many of you squander your blessings? All of us. <laughs> Mike was the first one with his hand up. Man, I got them suckers laying all over the ground. <laughs> how, how, do you, how do you recognize that you've done that? It is important, by the way. How do you, how do you realize you've done it? Well, first you have to um, identify what the blessings are. Okay. Because so many go right. past that okay. lay unclaimed, I guess, or unacknowledged. That's fine. Right. Yeah, you're good. Let's put it this way. If you've got a mindset of plus R, you even identify them as a blessing, you're already on a page that some of the people don't even have. Okay? I mean, the fact that your breathing is a blessing. Well, that is, but, but that's a gen, kind of a common, that's a logistical grace blessing. Okay? Even the idiots can, you know, the, the, the people that don't know Jesus and don't want anything to do with Jesus and don't like Jesus and tell me bad things about Jesus and say, you know, uh, I used to have one of the bumper sticker on the back of the truck that said, don't be the hearse the first time you go to church. Okay. <laughs> Julie found that one down at the Christian bookstore down in Melbourne, I think. I hated it when that one wore out. But the thing is, is I had tons of comments about it. One guy said, why, why would you hate that? I said, well, if I got to explain it to you, I don't have to worry about where you're going. And he said, well, what do you mean by that? He was just real grumpy. And I said, well, you know, you're going to die someday, buddy bear. He said, yeah. It's a bit like, big deal. I said, what happens if it's not nice on the other side where you're going? Why would that be the case? I said, oh, this thing called Bible that's been around for a whole bunch of years that everybody and her uncle picks up every now and again. And by the time he was done, he wasn't as nasty, but he still wasn't sure he wanted to believe. I said, that's totally up to you, but do me a favor. I want you to remember one thing. This conversation that you're having, it is going to be on the wall wherever you go. 
And if it's hot and nasty, I hope it says, la, na, 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 <laughs> And he just looked at me and kind of weird and walked back. <laughs> Washed off. But I'm telling you, these people, they have no concept at all. So at any rate. Now, so you got to be plus R. So your plus R is equal to a cup. All right? Anytime anybody says their cup runneth over in the Old Testament, you know one thing for sure. They need a bigger cup. No. <laughs> no. no. You know, the, they are plus R, okay? Just so that you know. Yeah, cups were kind of big back then. Yeah. Um, what did they have at the table? What are they always looking for? The what were they looking for in the crusade with, with Indiana Jones? The yeah. goblet. Yeah, the goblet. Which one? The what they call it. No, what they call it. The Holy Grail. Yeah. Remember? All right, why is that important? Why is that important? Jesus said, I'm the cup. If you got me, you got blessings. You ain't got no cup, you ain't got no blessings. Anybody have a Dixie cup with a hole in it? Anybody have a Dixie cup? <laughs> All right, anybody have a styrofoam cup? And if you pick one up and somebody's crunched it on the corner and you get to the truck and you can follow me everywhere I went because there's this line, do me a favor, get another cup. Christ cup doesn't do it. It slops out the top. It don't leak out the bottom. As a matter of fact, I remember Sam Cathy said, oh, by the way, you're a human. You do have the Holy Spirit, but you leak. <laughs> well, I, I never forgot. Tell him who he was. Sam Cathy was a cowboy boot wearing yeah. evangelist that came through the church probably 25 or 30 years ago. And just a phenomenal, I just enjoyed him so much. He was so down to earth. But he said, the fact that you leak tells you why you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit on a regular basis because your cup is leaking. And I said, oh, makes sense. My, my sin nature is always going around punking holes and stuff. And here I am. An ability to fill it up again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so, all right, we're flipping the page. Where are we at now, boss? 273? Yeah. Right, I'm sorry? You have five minutes. Five minutes. Uh, let's see what we got going here. Alright then. In verse 4 it says, How then was it counted while he was uncircumcised or, or circumcised or uncircumcised? Not while circumcised, but while uncircumcised. All he's doing is reiterating what we said all over the place before. How can some how something came to be? How? How did it come to be? He had a conversation. He was plus R after the conversation. He was minus R before the conversation. But when he had a conversation, it so enthralled him that when he told him he had to be circumcised, he did not flinch. He was all in from the get-go. All right? And you have to understand something. Why would he be all in? He already submitted. He already submitted. He already submitted. He already believed. He already had faith. He was already plus R when this was taking place. He said, you're plus R. You belong to me now, and I'm going to show everybody that you belong to me. And in showing everybody that you belong to me, it's going to show me how much you've matured. And you know when top spiritual maturity showed up? Told you again and again. When? When you die. Uh-uh. Even better than that. When you're born? Say again? When you're born? Nope. What is the question? When did his, when did his peak? Isaac. When did his peak? Spiritual maturity. Maturity occurred. show up. Isaac. Isaac. Yeah. All right. So now you're talking about somebody that's been a Christian for, well, they figure Isaac was mid-20s mm -hmm. maybe. So he was 20 years a Christian, 20 years some plus Isaac. So he's somewhere around 40, 50 plus, somewhere in this neighborhood. And he's over here having a conversation with the one that he loved, by the way, with a love that is understandable only if you're plus R. And when he told him to go up the hill, something was happening to the boy. Never wavered. Matter of fact, he even had the source of the sacrifice picking up 
kindling and firewood on the way up. That's sold out. Okay? And in doing so, what happened? How did it come to be? How did it come to be that he became this? Because he sold out when he was plus R. Does anybody ever try to tell you you don't believe something? What do you do with that? That they don't believe or you don't believe? I don't believe. What There's do people who try that every mind. now and then. What do they know? They're not my mind. Well, there you go. <laughs> That's exactly right. All right? Somebody, somebody said, well, you lost your eyesight. Is that bad? I said, no, I don't see how it could be bad. I don't see. Get it? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I don't think I was playing with words then. But the problem was they saw it as a problem. I saw it as whatever the Lord's going to do to his piece of clay, he's going to do to his piece of clay. Well, it was only one eye, so. There you go. I'm tickled. Okay? And the thing of it is, is what happens then? You realize how you change your viewpoint after something like that? Viewpoint. <laughs> anyway, this is what Abraham is going through. He is seeing through God's eyes now. And as he sees through God's eyes, he sees everything entirely different. And whether he went up the mountain thinking God was going to produce something, or whether he went up the mountain for, to say that he was going to kill his only son, okay? still had a promise in his head that he was going to be the father of nations. He also knew there was going to be a whole bunch of them. And he knew that if he killed this thing, there would be other provisions for him to, to, to create that promise. So it was, never, it was never a problem for him to do this. So here he is going up and becoming, really, he's headed for soup, what they call in some of these guys and theme to super grace. But he was super distressed about doing it. I'm sorry? He was super distressed about having to... Um, he was, him. except for he was so... Um, he, you know how I know that, that he was okay with it to a point? When his son said, uh, by the way, Dad, uh, where's the sacrifice? And what did he say? I that's not somebody that's freaking out. That somebody has put something totally in his hand. And, he, and, and I've told you before, as far as the Jews are concerned, they think that he, the ones that believe in Christ even more so, they think that he actually did kill his son and that his son was resurrected when you see him running in the field towards Rebecca. How do you like that? Don't that just dink up your theology? And I mean, if you want a picture of Jesus Christ, kill the rascal and let him come back to life. You see what I'm saying? There's so many things out there that, that can be influential at different places in different people's belief systems. So don't cross them all off the list. Well, he, but understand what he... Go ahead. But well, even Abraham even reasoned in his heart that God would raise his son from the dead. You know, it, it says so in, in, in Hebrews. Yes. You know, that, so you see what I'm saying? He was totally bought in. He knew, he knew God's plan. He knew, And why did he know God's plan? Because he talked to the guy on a regular basis. Okay, not like you and I through doctrine, but through conversations and, and up here. Go ahead. And did you say he didn't go back to Sarah? <coughs> uh, yes. Also, when he came down off that mountain, he was not going home to tell. And you realize what I found the other day, what Sarah means? Bitch. She was a nasty rascal. So coming off the mountain after killing her only son, I'm thinking I'm not going home right away. I don't think anybody would go home right away. <laughs> <laughs> so all you have to understand is just uh, there are so many different things that you can put together to make a story complete. But his in his heart, he was definitely plus R, even going up the hill and all the way to the top. And when the, if the ram showed up or whatever he did up here, he came back down. And please understand something. If you show me anywhere where it says Isaac came off that mountain, I'll be glad to change my body. <coughs> I, uh, I, I searched for it. Well, Isaac was a miracle to begin with because oh. they were beyond beyond age. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. We'll get into that miracle in chapter in chapter four because the way that some people teach it, they're talking about resurrection. The only thing that boy wondered was resurrecting was his testosterone level. Okay. That was all he needed, and that's all there is to it. Yes, ma'am. Well, I was just going to say when you when you researched that word, wasn't it her original name? Yeah, Sarai. 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 Woman of contention or... Right. right. And then she woman. had her name yeah. changed. Yeah. God changed her name. Though. Yeah, he did. Why? 
She changed too. She changed. <laughs> she changed too. So there's a lot of stuff in here that it, 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 Old Testament is exceeding. And Shirley would be glad to know this. Old Testament is exceedingly interesting in filling in the spaces. Well, you gave me a lot of. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, boss. Oh, you got a busy week now, huh? Yes, I do. Well, it'll be raining. Anyway. I've never uh, thought or heard this, and I'm going to check that yeah. out. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the reasons you know that she was a crank, she offered what's her face yeah. to him. Bigger. To do the yaya to get the to get Ishmael, right. and then she was That's grumpy about it. Yeah. Like I offered you the handmaid and you took it, you know that type of deal. So anyway, next I'll make a reality show about it. <laughs> yes, probably will. Anyway. Okay, you want to start at four ten? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. We'll just start right there. We'll just start. Yeah. Uh, we'll just start right there and go. Yeah. Have a trouble there? Sorry. Yes, I was almost falling All over right. there. Um, what all we got going on here? Well, all that. Yeah, because we got a bunch of stuff with Abraham there that's uh, kind of important. All right. Uh, Ken, James, Mrs. Helton, Amy, Ann, Tom. Tom's doing well. Claudia, Gracie, Pam, Kay, and Don. Don Freeman is in the hospital with low oxygen level, and they found a mass on his lung after they oh. fixed his eyes. So. We're not sure what's going on there, so just keep in your prayer. I put Dale, that's usually here, keep praying that he gets his house sold in Virginia so he can put his family back together. And I put Al's folks, mom and Dave's mom, for rehab here. Um, Memorial Day weekend, I put that down. A weekend to remember those who gave their lives for your freedom. And Marianne has family issues. John, um, God is good. Thanks for all he does. Lois, traveling back to Califerty. When are you heading out? Sunday morning. Oh, I was going to say, okay. Is this a Sunday, right? Yeah, a week, a week from Sunday. Next Sunday morning? Yeah, and I'm staying, I think, through the 12th at least. Mm -hmm. Well, at least you're not going to Hawaii, right there where it's dumping in the ocean. So, uh, maybe that part. Well, just stay close to the border so you can hit it in Nevada if it does decide to fall off while you're there, okay? All right. Um, I put uh, Glenn's aunt Helen, Helena, Helena. Helena. I'm sorry, age 95. Does anybody not get old in their families? <laughs> it's degrading in health. Jeez, I can't imagine why. It has artery calcification outlook, outlook not promising, and where they add up in Louisville. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was oh, the, okay. That was the aunt I went up to see about to a month ago. Okay, that's right. Okay. And Julia job, Josh a job, Brandon his health, which is their friend. And my sister Teresa, um, health. She had surgery on Tuesday. More tests. Very restrictive diet. And no, she had no. surgery on Monday, but she had a post-op, and now she has another thing this coming Tuesday. Oh, she has Not another thing. Like, oh, another thing. Yeah. I don't know what that. What's a DR? Doctor. Oh, that's a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I didn't get all the abbreviations. Today. My bad. So, all right, well, keep all that in, in, in tow, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so uh, let's pray, and uh, hopefully the rain doesn't do too much wedding, and, uh, well, it's, it's Sunday again here before long. We thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for all the information that you put in there, and we thank you for the Holy Spirit allowing us to bring it out at the correct time. Watch over us, Lord, as we leave here. Allow us to have a pleasant holiday. Remember the things we need to remember. Enjoy family and whatever else takes place. Bring us back here next week so that we can study your word again and in doing so give you honor and glory for the opportunity. In Christ's name. Amen. Amen.